Well, here I am again, Tom Collier from the uh, Hubbardston uh, Vietnam Memorial Crew. Uh, we're coming down to the last of this whole project. Um, we're doing this uh, video in uh, the later part of April, looking forward to the end of May when we get uh, our show on the road and show everybody what we've done. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that we've uh, accomplished uh, other than just our own Vietnam Memorial. And with me today, I have Gary Kangas here from town. Uh, Gary is uh, the town's historian. I mean, I don't know that he has that title, but everybody in town knows that if you need to find something about the, uh, what happened in uh, you know, in the Civil War, he has that information or he can find it. And so, Gary, we're going to start with, appropriately, the, um, the Civil War. Um, what we've done, uh, because we, you people have been so generous in your donations and the support of what, of what we've done since last March, uh, we were able to, to raise more money than we actually needed to do for the, for the Vietnam Memorial itself. And we decided what we would do with the excess was to go back and look at all of our memorials and all of our statues in the town relative to being veterans uh, and see what, uh, what we could do to maybe spruce them up, clean them up, uh, uh, or you know, make repairs. Uh, as it is, the, the one that, of course, has the most damage is the one that's the Civil War, because it's the oldest one. Uh, Gary, what, what year was that one put up? Do you know? I know the, the blocks that the cannons are sitting on, they were made in 1905. Okay, in 1905. Well, that's a good place to jump off, because there's a whole bunch of things about this memorial that... Uh, that need to be addressed, the things that we've uh, found and, and the things that we've uh, fixed. So why don't you just jump in right here and start. Let's go top to bottom. How, what about that eagle up there? Well, for years the eagle was missing. We, rumor had it that it was down at Brigham Pond, so they were talking about draining the pond to find it. And then years later they, uh, they found it in the back room of Wheeler's store. So I no idea how it got there, but anyways, they, uh, the eagle head was missing and broke off, and Charlie Clark did put a pin in there and tried to repair it. But in years later, the, it fell off, and well, I put in a, got the news that if any kids found it or thought it was cool, that they took it home, that we're looking to anyone knows of its whereabouts, that they return it to the town office, and we could repair the monument. No one ever come forward? No. So, uh, that's the funny thing. Years ago, it was 1975, I was going to carve the eagle because carving marble was much like carving wood. It's, it's a soft material. Right. And then I went to Sergeant Memorials and, to get a block of granite, but it was too small of a block, so I never did carve it. What we did is that we, we got pictures uh, and took a lot of several runs at, at making sure that we had exactly the, the, the eagle that was on top of that. And when we had our memorial uh, stone made, we had that company re redo that, and it looks really nice. And uh, and I should make I'll have to. This applies to all of the memorials, but I, since this is the first one, let me just make this clear. Um, whereas things were able to be removed from things in the past. Trust me, you can't remove them from these things. We fix that. We fix it so that you cannot go take the eagle off, and you can't go you know, de deface without, you know, making enough noise that you're going to every some everybody around down that there is going to know that something's going on. So. And the cannonballs disappeared, and right. were, rumor had it they were, some kids rolled them down on Elm Street, and they ended up in someone's well. Right. But they did find one that's now in the historical museum, uh -huh. and like that. And from that, they know the size and right. what they were. Yeah, and, and that was another story. Was <laughs> was uh, uh, for those of you who may not know that there there used to be 
uh, cannons on both sides of that memorial. And they had uh, a, a set of 20, I think, cannonballs, two on, one on each side. Two, two piles of them. Yeah, two piles in a pyramid. When I came to town in, in eight, 1985, uh, they were just two cannons on each side setting on the ground. And uh, it never really, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a naval aviator and so cannons were not my, my, <laughs> my, my stand, but I, I never really thought about the fact that the cannons were sitting on the ground. And, uh, you know, obviously they must have had a carriage under them somewhere you know, back when they were actually cannons that someone was using. Um, and, uh, and Gary here was actually able to show us some pictures uh, of those cannons when they were first up there. And what it, what it turned out to be was they were sitting up higher. So you pick it up from there and tell us about that. Well, they, um, Tom asked me to send the picture and what the monument looked like. And the cannons were sitting on this granite block that was about this high, and the cannons were on top of the block, where now they're uh, close to the ground. So I guess when they were digging the foundation for the, the monument to put the cannons, they uh, found the blocks buried on the ground, dated 1905. Right. There was a story that, that the cannons were up on, the, on these blocks, about two feet off the ground, and then they, uh, they, but they only sit in a cradle so that, you know, they, they they could rotate up and down. And kids could fall off and get and, hurt. And, and kids could fall off, kids would play on them and they would fall off and get hurt. So this, what they did was they buried the things, that, the, 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 the big granite chunks in the ground and then put the cannons down. Well, we're bringing them back up, but you you can go out there and jump on the cannon and it ain't gonna move <laughs> because <laughs> we're, you know, it's, I'm telling you, if you do that, you're only going to hurt yourself because it's not going to move. Um, and so that will be restored in that way. And the cannonballs will be welded together so that they can't right. be removed and rolled down the street. Right. All right. Well, that, you know, that kind of finishes us up with, I think, with the Civil War um, memorial. And, and we can move on. Uh, and I'm going to go in, in, in order of how they're... You know, if, if you're standing on on 68, looking up on the, so the on the right on your right, that's where the memorial is for the Civil War. The next thing over is going to be World War One. That that particular one uh, didn't really need any uh, repair, but it needed to be cleaned up. And and uh, and before we before you get to the memorial, before Memorial Day gets here, those things will be done. As soon as the weather clears up enough so that we can get in some power washing and that, that we're gonna clean those all up so they will be back to their, their natural, or their beginning, how they looked, or maybe closer to how they looked. Yep. Sometimes my wife accuses me of the only time I really think and get a good idea is when I'm in, a, in bed and in sleep, but, uh, this one was uh, one of those things that woke me up <laughs> that, you know, we have these memorials and we have all these names, but, you know, most of these, one of, if you really want to talk about the people who were lived in Hubbardston and actually um, were in this, these wars, um, they're in our, they're out there in our, in the, buried here in town in various different uh, places, and and we ought to always, you know, we uh, we try on Memorial Day to try to get all of these um, all of these graves with a to make to ensure they have an American flag on them, and that that is uh, is paid for by the the um, Memorial Day committee in town. Uh, but normally it's the uh, Boy Scouts, or the Scouts themselves, that uh, go out there and place those, those flags. And so, um, uh, you know, if, if you're going by and think you need a flag, don't go get one of those, please, because they're put there by someone for their family. 
though there is another interesting World War I thing we need to talk about. And this is something that's not, this, this uh, individual is not uh, on the, I don't believe that name is on the, that uh, memorial. Elizabeth Hunter? Uh, yes. And I, but uh, she's buried here in town. Yes. Tell me about her. Her, one of her relatives, uh, I don't know if it's the daughter or granddaughter, but uh, she came down and brought a scrapbook of uh, her life in the military. And it's very interesting, it's like 500 something pages. So I just scanned that and then when she brought the book down, we went down to the cemetery, uh, Pine Grove, and uh, we found the grave. You could, couldn't even read the lettering on it. So we uh, cleaned it and now it's very visible. And she was commanded by the General Persian, I think, World War I. Uh, she got a certificate she was given of her uh, honoring her service as a uh, telephone switchboard operator. They were called uh, Hello Girls. Hello Girls, that's and, uh, great. <laughs> and it's uh, said that uh, she killed a, a German spy. Oh, she was commended for that. Okay, that's World War I. Now, World War II. Well, there's another one built up there, another gray one up there that looks like the one World War I was. So they, you know, they were just going to copy, I think, uh, you know, the stone work. Uh, and that one is, <clears throat> that one is also one that has, uh, it doesn't have any really bad, um, anything that needs to be repaired so much as we need to clean it. And, and again, by the time we get to the end of this next month, that's going to be all taken care of and it'll be clean. And, and uh, if they have, uh, these things have, uh, you know, metal uh, things on them, we try to get those spruced up as well. So um, now, interestingly, as we go from there, that's the next thing is going to be the Vietnam Memorial. <clears throat> we now are in an era that um, unlike like all of the ones we've talked about so far, what, uh, it was only the people that were, the, were from Hubbardston and that they were, um, uh, it died in, in, bat, in, cat, in battle. Uh, now, it, it, no longer do, do we do that. So we get into, we get into, um, putting the names on, on memorials of anybody who was in the service in an era. And so the Vietnam era is measured on from 1955 to 1975. And if you, if you were in that, if you were in the, in the, in the service at that time, in any form, uh, you could have your name on there. And what we've done is We've contacted everybody we can find. And we're up over, we're about probably somewhere around 205 names. And actually, the, just here this morning, uh, we were informed we had four, five more. Um, and so we were at 200. And so uh, after we put the memorial in place, probably a week uh, and a half early, um, we will have five more names added to it, which is not, an e it's not a difficult pro problem to do. And some of these came to Hubbardston after their service. Well, that's right, and I'm an example. I mean, I, <clears throat> you know, I was, um, I was in Vietnam three different times from the beginning and to the end, and, uh, um, but it was years later after that that I w was uh, sent by the Navy up to, uh, oversee General Electric in, in Lynn, and I, so I came to Hubbardston. And so that we had veterans that were in, we have several veterans in town that, that were in the service in one way or another um, during that era, but never actually went overseas or went in. They may have gone overseas, but they weren't in country. Um, however, the, the idea, when, when the issue came up about who was going to be on this thing and not on this thing, um, <clears throat> there are three of us on the committee that are actually, uh, were actually in country. 
Um, and what we said was, you know, um, we couldn't, we may, all of us have been killed had we not had the backup of the other people that were, you know, getting the, the ammunition to us, repairing our airplanes, um, and, you know, so that, you're in that service. Uh, and, you know, to my, you know, my, I was, I think that's the way, way to go. I mean, you can't, you know, you'll never, you never have everybody that's in the service, in any part of the service, that goes into combat on, to, you know, to save or to, you know, on the, on the behalf of our country. Um, just because they're, what they do best is something that doesn't qualify, doesn't make them go into the country, but rather to provide the ability for the rest of us to be there and come home alive. And if they uh, were in Vietnam themselves, the, they got a gold star next to their name. Yes, so, I, yeah, you're right. So we've got, I think we've got something like 23, there's about 23 of them on that thing, on the on a monument, and they have a gold star next to them. That is going to that memorial is not on the plaque, not up there. The others, we have a, there is a picture of it up there if you want to see what it's going to look like. But I'm going to tell you if you've been looking at that picture and you think that's what it's going to look like, you're going to get blown away because it's going to, it's 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 much larger than that. Black marble. And it's all black marble. And if you've been to the one in D.C. It looks just like it. It surely does. And that was one of the things that the that the three of us wanted. Um, we all all of us have people that we served with um, who are on that and and cut those those uh, fifty eight thousand names are people who who died. And uh, you know I was. <clears throat> I graduated from Annapolis in 1965. I have three of my classmates um, that are on that, and they they were um, they all three of them. They weren't in the same squadrons, but they all three got shot down over in Vietnam, and uh, you know, so we you know we were adamant that we were gonna have one that looked exactly like that one over there. Because we have some people on ours that, that uh, passed away. And, uh, and, I, and then, okay, so that's the Vietnam Memorial. Let's get on to the one next to that, which is the Spanish-American War. We actually have an, a, a memorial up there. Uh, and that's gonna have just, you know, again, a cleaning to make sure it's spiffy and looks great when we go up there. Okay, nope. one more. And this <laughs> one's on the other side of the street, um, just right out in front of the uh, school. And that one is going to be, that is the, the uh, Korean War. And I think they may, is there, are there some people on it from, I heard a story at one point that, that somebody, they didn't have someone from World War II and they put it down there. I don't, I, I went over there, I can't see that, so. But there, that's where the Korean War Memorial is. Yeah. It's on the other side of the street. Any, anything you can tell me about that one? No, I haven't heard any story about that. <laughs> it's some, oh. it's some, yeah, well, there's, there's no cannonballs to roll down <laughs> the street. Uh, there's no, you know, <clears throat> granite, uh, there's no granite, uh, uh, eagles that we can try to throw in the air and see if they can fly. So I heard there's going to be a grand celebration come Memorial Day. Oh man, it's going. <laughs> it's just incredible, Gary. How many, how many veterans organizations, and just people who have come forward to support what we're trying to do. I got, I got chili bumps <laughs> right on my legs. <laughs> um, uh, it's just incredible, and it, you know, it's like. Uh, we're working, Bill Shea and I, who are on the, on the memorial committee, memorial committee, uh, and, and, uh, but we both are on the, the, the town's memorial committee. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and we, we just, it seems like every day somebody calls one of us and they want, they want in. 
Um, you know, we have, we've had, uh, um, you know, when Hardwick decided not to have a parade this year for Memorial Day, that t turned, you know, that let us have the Quabbin ROTC group, and we also have two other, another band and another marching group. Who are not are not from Hubbardston, but they they want to come up there. There there are a lot of them are from Vietnam, and they want to be here. Yeah, I guess they're gonna have a lot of military vehicles in this parade coming up. Oh well, see that's one. Uh, we had um, we had two young men from Barry uh, that <clears throat> whose one of them's grandfather uh, had a collection of, of restored World War II machines. You know all the way from jeeps to battleships well not battleships but you know um, <clears throat> and he's got i think he says he's got six of them he and when his grandfather passed away this young man was in high school and he and, and his uh, and a buddy in high school uh, took over that project and they and now they've been out of high school for a long time now they were my, my, I'm sure in their mid 40s because I know one of them was a classmate of my daughter, and uh, they've still done it, and they're all in, and uh, we've resolved an issue of you know how are we going to they're going to they'll be they will be in the parade, which is going to be the longest parade that they'll you they've ever seen in Wyoming. Here I, I was scared we were going to be out in the in the lined up somewhere close to Gardner. <laughs> um, they're going to be there, and and the question we you know they you know they they would like to park them so that people could see them. Uh, we had a meeting uh, with uh, the Memorial Day committee, uh, the town's Memorial Day committee, because they're the ones that really you know we have to figure that out with, and. Uh, and the police chief was there and he says, no. He says, what is, you know, we're gonna, all of the fee, all of the food is going to be over in that, the parking lot in front of the police station on the other side of 68. And uh, he said, we'll just take the first three on, on the left side, you know, facing, they can come in and turn them and so they face into the, on the other side of the road. So how many vehicles are you figuring is going to be? All six of them. Yeah. They're all going to be there. So they're going to be right across the road. Now, the, the nice thing about that is, is that uh, our Hubbardson Lions Club is going to provide all of the food free for the, everybody that's there. Mm. It's going to, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a, a dinner, but it's <laughs> going to be, I think it's hot dogs and chips and and, and some other things. and. And there gets, we've, the, I'm a, happen to be a lion as well, and and uh, that's one of the things that we're tasked. That's one of our things that we try to do is to do things for the town. So we're gonna we're gonna feed everybody free that day, hmm. uh, including not just the people that are in the parade, everybody that comes. And all you got to do is walk across the street to get a get yourself something to eat. And while you're there, you're right next to them. You can get up. There'll be people on on each of them to tell you, answer any kind of question you want. So it's going to be really fun. Yeah. It's going to last for a long time. <laughs> well, with the bicentennial, they had a three and a half hour parade. Right. Uh, yeah, about 30,000 people lined up this yeah, Main Street. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So anyway, I think that's yeah. everything we have. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let me sign off by just saying again, Gary Kangas, Tom Collier, um, most all of you know who we are. So if you have any questions, uh, get a hold of us. Uh, on the other hand, if not, please come see us on May the 30th, 2022.